you know, it's an amazing time in the world. It's an amazing time for us here. And, uh, it's an amazing time for me. Um, you know, spirituality is uh, it's more accessible now than ever before. And I think it's amazing uh, the wisdom that we can find online. I like, um, I love scrolling through the reels and seeing all these short clips of spiritual teachers offering their wisdom. Um, so anyway, it's just a, it's just kind of amazing, right? I wonder if uh, Buddhism would have come out any differently if Buddha had had access to all the global spiritual inspiration. Um, uh, or does it still stand the test of time? Like, is it still as relevant today, even with all the other possibilities and all the other wisdoms? And one of the realizations I had was that, yeah, this is Zen, right? Zen to me is sort of the core es essence of, of this uh, Buddhist awakening and practice uh, towards awakening. Um, and, and I feel it does, right? Anytime I hear spiritual wisdom from a different path and I sort of compare it to like, well, how does, is this Zen? And the things that really ring most true to me, I feel, uh, I believe are Zen. Uh, this awakening to this present moment, this right here now, this pre being present uh, and realizing the perfection of this moment right now is, uh, it, it stands the test of the, of the differences and the test of time. That doesn't change um, from my perspective. So anyway, it's fun and interesting, and I, I, I love it. I love checking all these different spiritual spiritualities out. I love this one guy who's basically channeling. I think he's channeling a being from another planet somewhere. <laughs> But everything he says is so like right on. It's amazing. And I'm like, wow. Um, so anyway, that's in the back of my mind. And this koan, so this koan I picked today uh, is inspired a bit from last week. You know, last week we had a great discussion why you was here from L.A. and what a, what a great teacher he is. And... Um, yeah, and someone asked a question uh, last week of, you know, so we live in this, everything changes, right? Moment to moment, everything's changing. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no reality that is stuck or absolute in a way that it's like, this is, um, there's no truth that, that isn't changing moment to moment. Um, And somebody asks, well, what is it that carries on? What, what is eternal? Like, what, is, what is absolute then? Um, and that just got me thinking, right? It's just such a powerful question. And there's koans about it, right? I'm going I'm to talk about one. Um, but it's like, yeah, if everything's changing and we're, we're different from moment to moment, then what is the same? And this is part of the realization of this, this perfection of this moment is always here, right? This, uh, this oneness, right? That we're all connected is always here. Uh, that doesn't change. There's not a time in history where we're not going to be all connected as one under in our, in our true self. Uh, <clears throat> and yet we're changing all the time. So this is part of the realization is that we're, we're changing and we are eternal. Um, so we have this essence, our Buddha nature doesn't go away uh, throughout our lifetime. 
I believe in reincarnation, right? So through multiple lifetimes, millions, trillions of lifetimes, we still are connected and we still are perfect as we are, no matter what manifestation this takes. Yeah, and so this realization is, is powerful. And I was sharing with someone earlier today, I was like, the best gift you can give yourself in life is to wake up to this, to realize this inherent perfection and oneness that does not change with circumstance. Uh, <clears throat> once we realize that, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like uh, becomes an anchor for us. It's like every, all of our changing experiences, we can come back to this realization that we are perfect as we are, and we are all one. Uh, we can take refuge in that, in this. All right, so this koan that I feel, you know, reflects that, it's called the physical body. A monk asked Dariyu, the physical body decomposes. What is the immutable reality body? Dariyu said, the mountain flowers bloom like brocade. The valley streams brim blue as indigo. And that's it, right? That's the koan. <laughs> that's the exchange in between teacher and student. Uh, and so it's a, it's a similar question, I, I feel, as we had last week. The physical body decomposes. Everything's changing. Every day, my physical body changes every day. As we get older, uh, we start to get a little bit slower, a little weaker, a little um, uh, a little more feeble. Um, and even if we're not getting older, like if we're just, maybe we're exercising every day and super healthy, right? And still everything is changing. Uh, we have, we experience life and suffering and old age and dying and sickness and disease and it's a fact of life that we accept. So what, so that's not real, right? That's not the reality. I may feel sick today, but that's not the, the reality. That's not who I am because that'll change tomorrow. Or I'm well today, but that's not my reality. I'll, I'll, I'll be sick tomorrow or feel, you know, feel differently. Uh, my emotions will change. So, so this is not real. What is real? What's the reality if everything is always changing? And the teacher here, you know, gives a, <laughs> I don't think that, that that answer would, could really be pulled off today, right? This is classic Zen, right? It was like the old school. People don't really talk like this, and when they do, it's like, oh, that's a Zen answer. This wasn't a Zen answer back then. This was like a, a, an expression of oneness and, and perfection of the present. But now it's like, oh, right? I mean, we know Zen now. We know, we know how to see through that a bit and be like, oh, yeah, that's a Zen answer. You know, but what he's pointing to is like just the perfection in this moment. Right, the garden is blooming, and the or in the fall, right? It's the, the leaves are falling, uh, and the wind blows from the fan, of course, right now. Um, so we kind of see how to, we can see how to answer this, right? Well, so what's the reality? Oh, it's just here now. I'm just here now. <laughs> Nothing more annoying than somebody who's just here now. Um, and so that, that answer, right, it's like, it's a, it's a good answer for a classic Zen koan. Um, and at the same time, it, I think it, um, you 
you know, to, there's a thousand ways to wake up, all right? This is one of them, is, is to realize this is perfect right now. This perfection of this, this moment in the, in the heat, in the morning, in the sunlight, um, in the yurt. Uh, and I think it's, it's also, it's also fair to answer more directly, right? If everything's always changing, then what, what is, uh, what stays the same? <clears throat> A direct answer from my perspective right now is, is, uh, wake up to this perfection of this moment. and uh, create this intention, right? Have the intention of realizing this perfection of this moment. Have the intention of uh, realizing oneness. You know, because once we realize that, it answers all our questions. And of course, it's a lifetime of work. It takes a lifetime uh, of working on this. I personally realized the perfection of this moment probably 25 years ago. Right, I saw that, I saw, I got a glimpse of it. I had the realization. <laughs> And then I went on for 25 years to test that by being imperfect over and over as many, any, as many ways as I possibly could. Uh, so I've screwed up, right? I've, I've hurt people. I've made so many mistakes. I've wasted time. I've blown opportunities. I've ruined things. And I still do. Uh, I put myself in pain. I put myself in uh, circumstances where I will feel pain. And I go, oh, here I am again. <laughs> Why did I do this to myself again? And then I can remind myself, oh, this is perfect too. This particular brand of suffering is perfect too. <laughs> What's next? Um, Right, 25 years of that. And I must say that I, I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling better these days than I have in a while. Like I'm, <clears throat> I am putting myself in less, in the, in the path of harm less. And I'm creating things so that I feel a little more peace and a little more uh, grounded I, I am able to remind myself more often these days, oh, this is perfect. This is my life. It's perfect as it is, no matter what. I have an eye condition where I experience a lot of pain pretty regularly, especially in the night. I'll wake up and it hurts very bad. It feels like I'm being tortured. Uh, and I'm like, I'm in pain. I'm going, oh, but this is perfect as it is. <laughs> but this is my life and it's my pain. This is perfect, even though it hurts. Um, I'm able to do this more these days, right? From my realization I had 25 years ago. Um, And I didn't have the intention of clarifying that at the time. I had an unconscious intention, I can see, right? I can see I unconsciously was drawn to this practice and eventually put myself into this practice full time. But the intention wasn't clear. It just, I sort of fumbled into it. Um, 
And so that's part of what I want to share with you all today is to clarify this intention. You know, uh, part of the Eightfold Path is I was looking for right intention. And there's something like right intention in the Eightfold Path, but not, not exactly. And so what I see the Eightfold Path is all intention, right? Right effort. Um, let's see, I didn't write them down. I don't remember them all. But, um, but essentially all of every, uh, all eight of the Eightfold Path, the eight paths are, are uh, an extension of right intention, right? Once we have right intention, then it, it, uh, it filters into everything else we do, right? So if we have the right intention, um, then everything we do becomes right. It becomes part of that, ex an extension of the intention. <clears throat> um, so I wanna encourage us to, to clarify our intention in our life. What is our life's intention? And uh, what they call right resolve is the closest, I think. Uh, right resolve is to make the intention to to live uh, to live ethically and to awaken fully, right? To, to realize this perfection and oneness. That's, that is here, that we are, to realize this more thoroughly is right resolve. And so that's close to what I'm talking about, right? The right intention is to have good intention, have, have good intentions, right? I intend to have good intentions, you know? So I, I can, consistently get stuck in my my greed and my anger and my ignorance you know consistently that doesn't go away but what I have is this anchor of intention I'm like okay you know I, I strayed and now I'm reminding myself I have this intention I want to awaken more fully I want to help others. Um, I want to live in peace. And I want to live in love. Right? Uh, love is, is one of the stronger ones for me in the past couple of years. It's like I want to live in love more. And I want to share love and I want to be more loving. And that takes care of a lot of you know, that covers a lot of these intentions and right paths. Um, and so, right, so on the absolute side, right, we realize, oh, I'm perfect and whole and I'm one with everything. And I don't need to change anything. There's nothing, because there's nothing to change. This is eternal. This is lasting. I will always be perfect as I am and I'll always be connected in oneness. I realize that. And on the other hand, I carry this intention. Oh, I, but I need to be more, I want to be more loving. I want to be more connected and I want to come from love more often. And so my life is a, it's a dance back and forth, right? It's holding both of these and moving back and forth. Okay, now I'm stuck and I remind myself, oh, I'm, you know, coming back to love. And oh, I realize the perfection and the oneness and Right, even when my eye hurts, you know, so great. Oh, now I'm back in being greedy and in anxiety. <laughs> and so I'm just sort of constantly dancing this dance between these two. And this is a gift. This is a gift I have from this realization. Uh, right, this is as good as it gets, is that I, I'm able to do this dance now. Whereas if I was just holding on to one of them, right, as an addict, I know what holding on to oneness is, being stuck in oneness, 
if I'm just holding on to oneness and I'm just feeling perfect because I'm on drugs, <laughs> that's no good. That's not a dance. That's being really stuck. And on the other hand, if I'm just constantly in anxiety and projecting fear and telling a story of how things are not perfect, there's no dance there either, right? The dance comes when we can really carry and hold both of these realizations. Um, that I'm perfect and I need a lot of work. You know? So that's essentially what I wanted to share. And um, so now I'd like to hear from you all and open it up. Uh, from you all. Uh,